In this module, we are going to discuss positive displacement machines. As uh, I mentioned during the introduction, uh, positive displacement machines are not taboo machines. Uh, nonetheless, they are used quite extensively in many uh, real life applications. So, for the sake of completeness, uh, we will uh, discuss positive displacement machines in this series of lectures, but um, in a not in a very detailed manner, in a somewhat uh, brief manner. So, the general mode of operation in a positive displacement machine is that a chunk of fluid uh, is taken into a space in the rotor, and this uh, chunk of fluid is then physically moved or displaced or carried by the rotor. From the inlet to the exit, hence the name positive. Uh, hence the name displacement machine. Now, during this displacement, the space occupied by the fluid decreases. The uh, the uh, rotor is designed in such a way that the space occupied by the fluid decreases, uh, causing the chunk of fluid to be physically squeezed or compressed, thereby increasing its pressure. Hence uh, the uh, term positive. So positive displacement refers to the fact that the pressure increases uh, while the chunk of fluid is uh, physically displaced from uh, the inlet to the exit by the rotor. Uh, so consequently, since a chunk of fluid is taken, compressed, uh, and then sent out, the flow rate from the positive displacement machines generally uh, uh, tends to be uh, oscillatory. But the oscillations may be smoothed out using a reservoir of suitable size on the exit side and that is usually done. Now as already mentioned positive displacement machines are not turbo machines since the pressure rise uh, is, of the fluid is not due to rotor dynamics but rather by physical uh, compression of the uh, fluid. Uh, positive displacement machines are widely used for pumping liquids although uh, there are designs that are available for, uh, for compressing uh, gases also. We will take a look at that as well. Here is an example of a positive displacement machine. Uh, this is a gear pump. And as the name suggests, uh, this consists of uh, two uh, gears here, spur gears. They can also be helical gear or any other type of gear. Here we are looking at uh, a design that utilizes a, a pair of spur gears. Uh, the uh, gear on the top is connected to a source of power, so that is the driving gear, and the one in the bottom uh, is actually a driven uh, or idler gear. This is actually idle, and this is the driven one. So, what normally happens is the following if you take a cross sectional view of this pump, you can see the driving gear on the top, which is supplied with power, and the idler or driven gear on the bottom. Uh, so when the gears come up, so the direction of rotation is in the uh, uh, clockwise direction here. So when a pair of teeth uh, come up to this point, the gears are completely unmeshed. And so the volume available between the gears is a maximum. So a certain chunk of fluid is then taken into this volume. And uh, as the gear, this uh, gear moves up like this, and as this moves down like this, uh, half of the chunk of fluid is carried along in the passage on the top and the remaining half is carried along in the passage below. So you can see why we call it a displacement pump because this fluid is physically carried by the gear on the top and uh, the gear on the bottom from the inlet to the outlet side. Now as this uh, pair of teeth uh, approach uh, the outlet side, the gear begins to mesh and so the fluid that is, contained, uh, that is contained in the space between the teeth is uh, subjected to an enormous increase in pressure because it is literally being squeezed. And the fluid is then sent out through the outlet side. Okay? So uh, when the gears unmesh, a certain chunk of fluid is taken in. This chunk is then transported from the inlet to the outset, uh, outlet on the top and the bottom. And the gears then begin to mesh, thereby uh, reducing the volume or space that is available between the teeth and consequently increasing the pressure of the liquid which is then sent out through the outlet. Now several observations uh, can be made regarding the, uh, uh, the operating characteristic or H versus uh, Q uh, flow rate characteristic of uh, such a device. Uh, the first point is uh, this. 
if no power is supplied then this also becomes an idler gear so as the gear is unmeshed a certain amount of fluid is taken here and this amount of fluid is moved from the inlet to the outlet side and it then goes out okay so whatever is taken in is sent out and there is no increase in pressure of the fluid because no power is supplied so the volume of fluid that is uh, transported or displaced from the inlet to the outlet in this case is usually called the displacement volume so displacement volume is the volume that is uh, moved from inlet to outlet when the pressure rises zero okay now the displacement volume uh, is fixed because the geometry of the gears is fixed and so the uh, amount of fluid that can be moved per revolution from the inlet to the per revolution of the gear from inlet to the outlet is fixed now when we start supplying power to the uh, driving gear the only change that happens is that the fluid gets squeezed and its pressure begins to increase as we increase the pressure the pressure increases even more but notice that since the geometry is fixed the amount of fluid that is uh, delivered from the inlet to the outlet side more or less remains the same <laughs> even at higher pressure the only change that we will notice is that the pressure at the outlet side is much higher than the pressure at the inlet side which uh, suggests that the h versus q characteristic of such a pump will more or less be a vertical line uh, there is no change in flow rate but uh, the pressure increases with increasing power the second observation is that since the displacement volume uh, which is the amount of uh, fluid that is uh, moved from inlet to outlet per revolution of the gear is fixed because the geometry of the gear is fixed the only way to change the flow rate from such a pump is to either increase or decrease the revolutions per minute of the driving gear so if we increase the revolutions per minute then uh, the fluid that is delivered per minute will be more although the Uh, fluid delivered per revolution is the same because we have more revolutions per minute. More fluid will be delivered on the out outlet side, and vice versa when we uh, reduce the RPM. So that is the only way to change the flow rate of uh, such a positive displacement. So with this in mind, let us now look at the uh, actual characteristic of a gear pump. So here we have characteristics of a gear pump, which is reproduced from the uh, fluid mechanics uh, textbook by uh, Fox and McDonald. and as we had already uh, uh, said um, it can be seen that for a given rpm the characteristic h versus q or pressure versus q is an uh, is almost a vertical line with a slight uh, inclination to the left so there is a slight inclination to the left from bottom to top and um, the only way to increase increase the flow rate is to increase the Uh, rpm of the device rpm of the driving gear okay what is that the displacement volume is actually given to be 97 milliliters per revolution but this may also be obtained by extrapolating this characteristic all the way down to h equal to 0 and then calculating the flow rate remember we already said that uh, the displacement volume is the amount of fluid that is delivered from inlet to outlet when no power is supplied and hence no head is developed so when we extrapolate this all the way down to uh, the x axis and uh, determine the flow rate there that would be the uh, displacement volume of uh, uh, of uh, of this uh, particular design okay. now two uh, sets of curves are plotted here the uh, dashed one is the so called Uh, volumetric efficiency and you can see that for a given rpm uh, the volumetric efficiency decreases as the uh, head increases okay? and the volumetric efficiency is nothing but the actual volume delivered divided by the pump displacement okay? uh, since the uh, characteristic is slightly inclined to the left the actual volume delivered will be somewhat less than the displacement volume in an actual application and that ratio is called the uh, volumetric efficiency of the pump if the characteristic that to be uh, perfectly vertical then the volumetric efficiency will be one since it is slightly inclined to the left it actually uh, decreases uh, from one to <coughs> reasonably high values uh, these are not very low now the solid line indicates the uh, overall efficiency of the uh, of the machine and this is defined as the hydraulic power which is nothing but rho q g times h divided by 
the input power that is uh, provided <coughs> so and as can be seen here the uh, overall efficiency uh, keeps increasing for a given rpm the overall efficiency keeps increasing up to a certain pressure beyond which it begins to decrease just like what we saw uh, for a centrifugal pump also next let us discuss the effect of uh, fluid viscosity on the uh, performance of the gear pump in other words what we would like to know is how these uh, characteristics change if instead of uh, pumping uh, a liquid like water we uh, start pumping a liquid like a, a 10w oil or some other heavy oil using the same gear pump so it uh, turns out that in the case of uh, uh, gear pump uh, the characteristics are shown here so it turns out that in the case of uh, gear pump there is a very little change in the performance characteristic as a result of a change in viscosity and uh, this is uh, because of the manner in which the fluid is actually transported in the gear pump so if we go back and take a look at the uh, the the nature of operation uh, you can uh, see that uh, the fluid is uh, uh, literally transported in the uh, space between the gear teeth from the inlet to the outlet so uh, whether we uh, carry um, uh, fluid of higher viscosity or lower viscosity makes a little or uh, no difference uh, to the transport uh, mechanism or increasing pressure of this fluid as we go from gear to gear the only effect uh, though that we notice here is that as a result of higher viscosity you can see that you know, the volumetric efficiency uh, goes up slightly which is uh, sort of counterintuitive one would expect uh, the performance to degrade usually uh, with an increase in viscosity but but here the volumetric efficiency increases slightly and again that is um, uh, inherent in the nature in which the fluid is transported so in in an actual case the volumetric efficiency is uh, not 100% due to uh, leakage of flow in the gap between the crown of the gear uh, t and the inside the uh, surface of the casing so the oil uh, keeps leaking back from the high pressure side to the low pressure side which uh, then uh, reduces the volumetric efficiency now uh, with an increase in the viscosity this leakage flow through such a small gap is uh, reduced uh, significantly uh, resulting in an increase in the volumetric efficiency at higher viscosity so apart from this uh, small change that we see here uh, the viscosity of the fluid plays little if no role on the uh, performance characteristic of a gear pump now in contrast in the case of a uh, centrifugal pump or a rotor dynamic pump the effect of viscosity on the performance is quite dramatic okay because with increased viscosity uh, there is increased um, uh, uh, shear stress between the fluid and the um, solid surfaces such as blade surface and impeller surface and uh, so more of the input power has to be used to overcome uh, this uh, frictional shear stress between the fluid and the uh, solid surfaces and so uh, lesser amount of the input power goes towards increasing the uh, head of the fluid that is being pumped so we consequently see for a given power and rpm an increase in viscosity of the fluid that considerably degrades the performance of the uh, machine the head drops uh, head develop decreases dramatically the flow rate also decreases dramatically in contrast to uh, the case of a positive displacement pump in which the uh, change in viscosity increasing viscosity or decrease has a little or no effect on the overall performance and as we said this is due to the manner in which the fluid is actually transported and uh, the head increase is achieved in a positive displacement pump okay let us now work out an example uh, involving the uh, gear pump the problem statement reads like this a positive displacement pump with characteristics as shown before is required to deliver a fluid at a 10 mpa while running at 2000 rpm determine the volume flow rate volumetric efficiency and the input power okay 
So it is required to deliver a fluid at 10 MPa. So we are given the characteristic. So 2000 RPM, the characteristic looks like this. So 10 MPa, uh, assuming that this is the pressure increase across the rotor, uh, corresponding to a delta P of 10 MPa, if we go into this uh, characteristic, we can actually work out the volume flow rate by going in like this up to the characteristic and then dropping down to determine the volume flow rate. If you do that, you uh, get the volume flow rate to be approximately 178 liter per minute. So the volumetric efficiency is the actual volume delivered divided by the displacement volume. The displacement volume is given to be 97 milliliter per revolution. So if we employ the proper conversion, the volume flow rate or volumetric efficiency works out to be 0 0.9175 which actually uh, corresponding to a pressure of 10 lamp on 2000 RPM. And this appears to be consistent with the figures that are shown here, or the values that are shown here. Now we are uh, asked to calculate the input power. Uh, the hydraulic power may be calculated as rho uh, QGH. And notice that the product of uh, uh, rho GH is nothing but delta P. So this may be written as Q times delta P and it works out to be 29.7 kilowatts. And if we go back into the characteristic corresponding to delta P of 10 MPa and um, uh, speed of 2000 RPM, the efficiency in this case uh, is roughly about 84 or so. So taking the efficiency to be uh, 84 or 0 0.84, uh, we can evaluate the input power as 29.7 divided by 0 0.84, which is 35.37 kilowatts. So uh, this concludes our discussion on positive displacement pump uh, for uh, pumping liquids. As I mentioned earlier, it is also possible to use a positive displacement pump for pumping gases, and that would look something like this. So this is a reciprocating compressor, which is used for compressing uh, refrigerants. In the early refrigerator designs, domestic refrigerators, reciprocating pump was uh, quite uh, widely used. Reciprocating pumps uh, can also be used for compressing air and other gases as well. So here, the uh, air is taken in uh, on, the in on the intake stroke uh, through an intake valve. So the piston moves from uh, the top dead center to the bottom dead center. So the displacement volume is known. So a certain amount of uh, air is taken in. So this is the displacement volume that is taken in. The valve, the intake valve is then closed and the, uh, uh, the piston moves up, compressing the gas that is uh, here in the displacement uh, volume. Once the pressure reaches a, a certain value, the exhaust valve is pushed open by this gas and the gases then flow off. Once again, it can be uh, understood that the flow rate from uh, such a reciprocating compressor will be oscillatory. So usually a high pressure reservoir is used on the side to smooth out the oscillations and the actual flow is taken from the reservoir to the desired application. This concludes our discussion on positive displacement machine.